Okay, now for question number 10 from the International A Level, Pure Mathematics P2, Ed Excel, October 2019 paper. We have an equation which is called C, a curve which is called C, which has an equation y equals ax cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x plus b, where a and b are constants. We're given that the point 0.25 lies on the curve C, and we're given that the gradient of the curve at 0.25 is, is 7. So these two key pieces of information are going to help us to find um, the values of a and b. So first what they're telling us is that when we substitute x as 2 into this equation, what should come out is 5, because when x equals 2, y equals 5. So when x is equal to 2, we know y should equal 5, because that point 0.25 lies on c, it satisfies the equation of c. And secondly, that they told us that the gradient of the curve at 2,5 is 7. That means the gradient function dy dx is equal to 7 when x equals 2. Okay, so those two pieces of information should be enough for us to be able to continue and find the values of a and b. So let's, choose the let's use the first bit of information first. We know that when x equals 2, y equals 5. So let's put those in the equation. 5 equals a times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus b. So you have 5 is equal to 8a minus 4 times 3, 12, 3 times 2 plus 6 plus b. So we have 5 is equal to 8a plus b minus 12 plus 6 minus 6. So we add 6 to both sides. So therefore we can say 8a plus b is equal to 11. We can't really do much else with this. You have two unknowns. So let's go to the other piece of information where we're told that when dy dx equals 7 when x equals 2. The gradient of this has to be 7 when x equals 2. So let's find what dy dx is first. Here we have to remember multiply by the power and take one from the power. So this is going to give us 3ax squared. Multiply by the power, so it's minus 6x. Take one from the power to the power of 1. And then multiply by the power, which is going to give you 3. Then x to the power of 0, which is 1. So it's going to be 3 and you have a constant which disappears. So in this case, it looks like we're going to find a straight away. So we know that when x equals 2, dy dx equals 7. So therefore, we can say that 3a times 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 3 has to equal 7. So that's going to give us 4 times 3, 12a minus 12 plus 3 equals 7. So we have 12a minus 9 equals 7. Add 9 to both sides, 12a is equal to 16 over um, 16. 12a is equal to 16. I'll just do it in two steps. 12a is equal to 16. I was jumping ahead of myself there. So therefore, a is equal to 16 over 12. So therefore, we can um, simplify that. Divide by 4. 4 goes into both of them. So, so you can say 4 over 3. So we know a equals 4 over 3. And we also know that... 8a plus b equals 11, so we have 8a plus b equals 11. So we can now find what b is by substituting a as 4 over 3. So we can say that 8 times 4 is 32 over 3. Don't make the mistake of multiplying them both by 8, it's just a numerator. Okay, plus b equals 11, therefore b is equal to 11 minus 32 over 3, which is going to give you 33 over 3 minus um, 33 over 3 minus 32 over 3, which is 1 over 3. So we say A is 4 over 3 and B is 1 third, and we have the solutions. We found what A and B are in this question. That's part A. Now on to part B. On to part B. Okay, so it says prove that C has no turning point. So this was the equation, and we had A equals 4 over 3, and b equals 1 over 3. Let me just confirm that in case a equals 4 over 3, b equals 1 over 3. That's right. Okay, good. Now, so our equation is going to therefore be y equals 4 over 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 over 3. Now, if it has no turning points, okay, what tells us about turning points? 
what's special about the turning points of a curve? Well, what's special about the turning points of a curve is that the gradient at the turning point is equal to zero. Okay, so if this curve has no turning points, then there will be nowhere on this curve which this curve will never reach zero. So let's first of all, therefore, find what dy dx is with the values of a and b here now. So it's going to be 3 times 4 over 3, which is 4x squared. You multiply the power by the power and take one from the power. Then you have minus 6x and you'll have plus 3. So basically, at the turning point, at the turning point, dy dx equals 0. So we can say if, if c has no turning points, turning points, okay, then dy dx will never equal 0. It will never reach 0. So therefore, 4x squared minus 6x plus 3 cannot equal 0. So that means that if we try to solve 4x squared minus 6x plus 3 equals 0, there should be no solutions. No solution. So what will help us to know if this um, will have no solutions? Well, it looks like it's a quadratic. The, the, dis the, the gradient function of our original function is a quadratic. So if we try to use the discriminant here, we say, okay, let's use the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. That should be negative. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, this will never equal 0. That means there will be no place on the original function that has a zero gradient. Okay, so there will be no turning points, therefore. So b squared, now remember a is 4, b is the coefficient of x, which is minus 6, and c is the, co the constant, which is 3. So you're going to have minus 6 all squared, minus 4 times a is 4 times 3. So you're going to have 36 minus, that's going to be 12 times 4, 48, which gives you minus 12. Okay, so therefore, we can say as b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Therefore, there's no solution to 4x squared minus 6x plus 3. Okay, so the curve C has no turning points. Points, you can even if you want say as it's I don't, this is a bit extra here, but as its gradient function, okay, as its gradient function, okay, can never, can never be zero. That's one way of, of showing it. There's also another way. You could, for example, complete the square and find that the vertex of this is um, above the x-axis and, you know, it opens upwards, so it will never reach zero. So if you did that, you could also work out that's going to be a bit more complicated but you could do that you could show that where the vertex is and you can show that if the if this opens upwards because it's a positive x squared and the vertex is above the x-axis it's going to turn before it reaches zero therefore it will have no turning point the original function now remember what we're drawing here and what we're talking about here this is not the original function this is the gradient function of the original function this tells you about the gradient of the original function okay the gradient of the original function it's not the original function itself Okay, this function could equal zero, but the gradient of this function cannot be zero. So there we, there, there we have the answer to part 10, um, and that's the end of the paper, I think. Yep, that was the end of the paper. I think 10 was the last question. Yes, it was. And there we have it, um, the paper done. As I said, if you want to see other questions on this paper, you can click on this playlist. If you want to see questions about the applications of differentiation i guess it's called you can click on this uh, link over here for the playlist for that if you want to subscribe for the channel you can subscribe at this point over here and that's the end of this paper thank you for watching and i'll see you in another video sometime